so the transfer function of the pi controller is the 1 upon 1 plus kp into 1 plus 1 upon tau by s okay so ye humne transfer function define kar diya controller ka sorry ha ah, yes controller ka gc is the time uh, transfer function controller so you can see this is controller this is the pi controller okay and then this is the plant plant is 1 upon s plus uh, whole cube and then the feedback okay this is the rehab situation point that is a linear so we are not taking it okay so pi controller the transfer function of the pi controller is gc or this is the gain okay so overall and the feedback is one so g underscore c is kya ho jayega feedback gc g into gc ye ho gaya aapka forward path g into gc and the feedback this is there is a one unity feedback so we have represented here g underscore gc in the forward path and the feedback path is one so forward and feedback it will give the transfer function overall system g underscore c okay and uh, the value of tau i 1 upon 1 plus 1 upon tau i s into kp okay so what will the kp what the, we have to choose two value first the variable is the kp and second the tau i so we can see here in the previous example in the previous example the value of kp okay you can see here yes you can see in the picture the which value of the kp is uh, is going to give the best result you can say optimal result in the in this in all these value so you can see here the kp equal to 1 will producing the satisfactory results as comparison to others so we have fixed the value here okay we have fixed the value kp is equals to 1 here the transfer function of the system is defined here okay so just we have taken s what is this is s is the laplace and operator right so now you can see tau i is now we are going to vary from 0.7 just we have taken you can take any value 0.7 to 1.5 okay by varying the step uh, change is 0 0.7 0.8 0.9 and so on the step change in 0 of 0 0.1 we have taken here 0 0.7 to 1.5 and we are varying with the with the step step change is 0 0.1 okay so this is the for loop you can you can uh, simulate the system okay like this okay so now you can see here the response of the system by varying the different value of the tau i okay so <clears throat> when we zoom this picture okay so you this such type of response will come okay so you can see the value of tau i the value of tau i as we are increasing as we are increasing the oscillation uh, is going to diminishes okay and the best response will come at you can say at tau i equals to 1.5 however the value at the, the at the value of tau i equals to 1.7 you can see the response is highly oscillatory okay so at uh, as the tau i is increasing the oscillation will decreases the oscillation will decrease so you can say that the value of ki is increases the oscillation will decreases on cases what will happen as the value of ki increases the oscillation decreases. is decreases yes oscillation decrease as tau i yeah. is increases as tau i is increases the value of oscillation is decreases tau i increase karega and the relation of ki is with the tau i is reciprocal so ki increases the oscillation increases now now i'm coming to the pid we have seen the pi controller response 
सो so, पहले हमने क्या किया हमने प्रोपोर्शनल कंट्रोल से पहले एक वैल्यू फिक्स कर लिया देन वी हैव चूज द वैल्यू ऑफ इंटीग्रल के आई टाव आई वैल्यू ओके एंड देन वी आर चेंजिंग द वैल्यू एट लेट से वी हैव चूज द वैल्यू ऑफ के पी एज टू वन टाव आई जुकस टू वन ओके एंड द ट्रांसफर फंक्शन ऑफ द सिस्टम इज लाइक दिस ओके and now we are varying the value of tau d okay tau d tau d is varying from 0.1 to 2 okay with res with a step change of 0.2 you can take any value i have taken this value okay so this is a standard i will just have taken okay the gc is equals to now what is transfer function of pid i i believe that you don't know so just i am telling you kp is kp into 1 plus 1 upon tau is Into tau d s. So this is the transfer function for the PID controller. So it is written here. Okay. So the value of tau y and tau k p is already defined in the above above here. Okay. So now just we have take the feedback. Okay. The transfer function just feedback g into g c because the controller transfer function is this one g c. Okay. And the plant is one upon one plus s one plus one q q. So we have said G. G is already defined here. G is already defined here. Just you put it here. G into G C. Or uh, one is in the feedback. One is the unity feedback. So we have taken one the unity feedback system. Take the step response. Hold this value. Hold all these pictures. And you want figures. So just you can see there the result. Okay. So you can see as the tau d value is. Uh, Increases, okay. The response will come like this, okay. So it means it means the best response. You can choose the you know best response from by by choosing the optimal value of this value, okay. So here picture se aap usko set kar sakte hain. Now comes the next part that is the In practical application, the pure derivative action is never used. I already told why due to the derivative kick. Why the derivative kick will come in the picture? It is due to the step response. Step response d by dt of response response step response gives the gives impulse. the impulse, and that is the undesirable or the noise amplification. Okay, so it is generally we are using the derivative controller with the help of the first order low pass filter. Already I have told. Okay, this is the Basic structure of the uh, derivative controller. So now, if you want to define such type of controller in the MATLAB, so you must be defined the value of n also. Okay. So the value of n is also defined like this one. Okay. The whatever the code is like same. The code is given just to record the response. Find here the error is also uh, you know recorded in the picture. So you can see here. Okay, this is the you know the reference line. Okay, and now we want to the value of n is equal to zero one, the best value. Okay, the response is coming like this. Just you record it. Okay. Now you want this. Go करके देखिएगा तब पता लगेगा आपको है ना? Okay. So this error yes. error is coming like this one when the error is when the value of n is ten. Okay. Now come to the next that is the very very important. Wait a minute. See the this video. This yes. is very important. The best way to find the gains for your PID controller are to derive the equations of motion of your system, and then use systematic methods from linear control theory. To find good choices of the gains. Now, often we can still design a good PID controller even without a good model of the system, and the way we do that is doing empirical gain tuning. So we're going to try an example of that right now. So first, you might want to choose some reasonable gains for your system based on how much control effort you know is available and 
uh, how much uh, error you can expect to have. So we're going to start with some reasonable gains, but first let's take a look at our system over here. This yellow line represents what we're trying to control. Maybe it's the position of a robot arm. Hello. This white line represents our reference Hello. signal. So initially the reference is zero and then it jumps up to some value and stays constant. That's called a step input to our controller. And therefore what we're going to be looking at is the step response of our controller. So let's, this is a simulation written in MATLAB. Let's try some gains for this unknown system. So PID tests, and I'll start out with a, a negative value for my proportional gain, zero for the integral, zero for, for the derivative. And if I have wires to the motor hooked up backwards, for example, maybe I need positive gains, maybe I need negative gains. So this will just be a test to see whether I need positive or negative gains. So I press enter. And you can see here that the response okay. of the motor went the wrong way. It's not going up, it's going away from the desired value. So that means I need positive gains. So let me try again with a value of one for the proportional gain and zero and zero for the integral and derivative. And now we can see that the, uh, the output rises closer to the reference value, but it's still not doing very well. So this is my first guess. I'm going to mark that with a 1. So this is my k sub p axis for proportional gains, k sub d for derivative gains. And my first guess here was at k sub p equal to 1, k sub d equal to 0. Since I'm still far away from my desired value, I need to increase my proportional gain. So let me raise it to 10. And now you can see that we're coming closer to the desired value. So this is my guess number 2 but we're still pretty far away. Let's try increasing it by another factor of 10. Okay, now we're getting closer, uh, but we still have a lot of ringing and overshoot here. So let me mark this as guess three. For the heck of it, let's try increasing the gain by another factor of 10. Okay, and now we're not getting any improvement in behavior. And in fact, if we took a look at our control signal, we would see that because we have such large gains for k sub p, that the control signal is always saturating. It's always at its maximum or minimum limit. So we're getting this kind of strange looking behavior here. And that says we've probably gone too far uh, just in the k sub p direction. So let's backtrack a little bit and try adding some damping. So we'll reduce our proportional gain to 100, make the derivative gain 1, and I see that. There's not much of an effect, so this is guess number five. Let's try increasing that by a factor of 10. So we're going to increase the derivative gain by a factor of 10. You can see it damps out a little bit, but still not very much. We're getting a lot of oscillation and overshoot. Let's increase by another factor of 10. Okay, now we're starting to see more damping. It's still oscillating a little bit, so that's up here. Let's try increasing the damping by another factor of 10. Okay, now we're getting something that looks pretty good. So we're getting this smooth rise and settling. So this is guess number eight. Okay. So this response doesn't look bad. We still have some steady state error. Let's try increasing the stiffness and increasing the damping together, hopefully thereby keeping the good shape of our response. And this is called the transient response while well, hopefully reducing this steady state error. So I'm going to double both the proportional and the derivative gain. So k sub p is 200, k sub d is 2000. Okay, now I'm getting even better performance. Uh, still the good transient response, less steady state error. So this is guess number nine. We've increased in both k sub p and k sub d. So let's stop there with our PD gain tuning. And by the way, we can't make our gains arbitrarily high or else we're going to see chattering behavior. Now let's try adding a little bit of integral action. So let's start out with KI is equal to one. So keep P and D as they are. And if you notice here now, the response starts slowly heading towards the desired steady state value. 
So we're seeing some effect of that case of i. Let's increase by a factor of 10. Okay, now we're seeing that we're getting essentially zero steady state val error, but we've introduced a little bit of overshoot, and that's what integral gain will do. While it tries to reduce steady state error, it may induce some instability. And if we wanted to emphasize that, we could increase that gain to 100, and now you're seeing lots of overshoot and oscillation. So we've gone too far with k sub i. So if we go back here, it looked like 1 was pretty good, looked like 10 was pretty good, but maybe somewhere in between. Let's try 5. And now this is a, this is a nice looking response. We get the zero steady state error fairly quickly and there's no overshoot. So things you care about in your response are how much steady state error do you have here? And do you overshoot? And how long does it take to settle? So here it settles to say within 2% of the final value by around here or so. So the faster that happens, the better. The less overshoot, the better. And the less steady state error, the better. If you're working with a second order system, like a force controlling a mass, it's almost always best to start by tuning the proportional gain and then go to the derivative gain. And to save the integral for last, again, it can have a destabilizing effect, so you have to be careful with its use. So hope you understand uh, the tuning with the help of the uh, empirical gain tuning or you can say the heat and tile method, right? So yes, in the next class we will start with the Jiggler-Nicolas method.